Okay, uh, now that you've tried a few differential equations on your own, we're going to solve one more for this entire learning target. And the good news is that this uh, differential equation is the one that we're going to need to use for all of the problems you've got to work in this learning target and on any assessment related to this goal. It's this differential equation, dy dx equals k times y. Notice that k is a constant, so it's some number. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of that fact, okay? So the plan is this. Since this is the scenario we're studying in this learning target that's about growth and decay, uh, we're going to solve this differential equation once and then use its result every time we need this. This is, this is a good thing. But let's solve it. Let's separate our variables, okay? There are a couple of ways you could do this, but to me the simplest way to do, this, to do this is to simply exchange my y with my dx and use those properties of multiplication and division to do so. So I think you could write that dy over y would also have to equal k times dx. I think you could show that based on the properties we know. Okay. And I've separated variables, so if I integrate each side, um, you know, the integral of dy over y, that's like 1 over y dy, so I would get ln of y. And again, I'm going to shortcut and not use the positive negative aspect here. Uh, k is a constant, so this, is, this here is nothing more than k times the integral of dx. Remember that you could pull constants out of integrals, so this would be k times x plus some constancy. Okay. Now the only trick that I have now is that I have to solve this for y. So I'll use that trick again where I take e as the base of each whole side and on the left side e to the ln of y that's just y. So if I go over here y is e to the kx plus c. I guess it's time for me to show you that trick I was talking about in the last video to get to the form of the answer we're looking for here. So the thing that mathematicians do with this is they don't stop here. They apply a rule of exponents. Um, you know that a to the fifth times a to the third is the same as a to the five plus three. It's that rule from algebra class where you said if you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. Well, they actually apply this backwards. They say that if you've got a base to a power that is a sum, you could write each of those, um, each of these numbers as exponents for the like bases. So they're going to use this property backwards. They're going to rewrite this using that sum idea as e to the c times e to the kx. I reverse the order on you, but I hope that you can see why that's okay. Now the other thing here is that if c is a constant, well so is e, so that makes e to the c some constant as well. So this is a constant also, and they gave this constant a special name, they call it y sub zero. And in a second we'll talk about why that might be their choice. So here's your solution. We get y equals y sub zero, or some constant, e to the kx. And the good news is that we need to solve that in every problem you're going to work in this learning target. So we've already solved it now. Let's just skip to that. So here's a summary of what we did on the last, uh, the last page of the last idea. Whenever the rate of change of y is proportional to y. This is a key phrase you're looking for for any problem in this learning target. Okay. Whenever the rate of change of something is proportional to its amount. Okay. And actually, a, a way to write this in mathematical terms is to say that something's rate of change, y prime, is equal to some constant times y. That's really all we work with in the last page. y prime, or dy dx, equals some constant times y. Okay. So whenever this differential equation applies, this is the solution. So we're going to take advantage of this in many contexts for the problems we're going to work in the next uh, couple of times we're together. 
Let's give you a, an example of how we might use this. This problem says the rate of change of n is proportional to n. There's that key phrase we're looking for. The rate of change of something is proportional to its amount. Okay. And then it gives me some other information that when, when t equals 0, n is 250. That seems useful. It also told me that when t is 1, n is 400. And they're asking me to figure out what n is when t is 4. But I might want to first think about this. Given that key statement we're looking for, I know that the solution, the equation I need to use, is that n is equal to, in this case, I'll use n sub 0. You know, when we had y, we did y sub 0. Now that we've got n, we'll do n sub 0. e to the k. And instead of x, I notice that the independent variable is t, so we'll use t instead. Okay. And this is the equation I need to use. There's really no calculus here. It's, we already did it, you know. So I see this. I know that I've got two constants, okay? n sub 0 is 1 and k is the other. And to really work this problem, I need to find them both. The really good news is that in this case, they told me what happens when t is 0. They told me that n is 250. So I can let t be 0 and n be 250, and I can saw, see what's going on. So 250 would have to be n sub 0 e to the k times 0. Again, when, when t is 0, n is 250. The good news here is that this is e to the 0th, and e to anything to the 0th power is 1. So I know that n sub 0 is 250. And that, folks, is the reason why they call it n sub 0. This, this value here will always be uh, the situation when x or t or whatever is 0. So I actually probably could have written that down given this sentence or this part of the sentence without showing the work, but it was probably good to go through it one time. So I've got n sub 0. Maybe I'll use the next piece of information to find k. So if I'm using this equation again, knowing that I now know n sub 0, when t is 1, n is 400. So let me start with n, that's 400. And that would equal n sub 0, n sub 0 was 250. e to the k, and t is 1. Okay. Well, hey, I think I can use this equation to find k now. So I should be able to check this one off. e to the k times 1, that's just e to the k. So I've got 400 equals 250 e to the k. I think I could solve this for k. I could divide both sides by 250. So 400 over 250 is e to the k. And I can do that trick where I do ln of both sides now. So ln of 400 over 250 would be ln of e to the k, which is just k. And if I use the calculator, I can get that value. Turn the thing on. There we go. So I need ln of 400 over 250. I get a value of about 0 .470. 0 .470. And now I can check off my k also. So I think I can finally answer their problem. When t is 4... Uh, all I have to do is put t here, and I'm done. So n would be, uh, n sub 0 is 250. I've got e to the k is 0 0.470. And they want to know when t is 4. I can get that value for you. So let's plug in 250. E is above ln, second in ln. We need E 
to the 0 0.470, which is 0.47 times 4. And I got a value of about uh, 1638. I lost it. 1638 point, we'll go 376. There you have it. You have a few that work out like this. It's probably a good time to try those now.